So today in Technical Corner, I'm here with Paul from ITC and we're going to be talking about the big Kaiser milling chucks and also the synchro tapping heads. So Paul, Hi. what are the advantages of the big Kaiser milling chucks? The first thing to uh, relate with big Kaiser um, in all their products is the fact that big die shower in Japan make the gauges that all the machine tool manufacturers make face and taper contact spindles from. Then they make, obviously, the range of tool holders in what they call BBT back ends, which is the face and taper contact. In every example of this, you're basically increasing the surface contact of where the tool holder fits into the machine, which then basically makes it more stable. So every product they produce comes with the face and taper uh, contact system. As part of their range, they obviously make collet chucks, etc. But in this case, just want to quickly talk about the HMC chuck, which is a high power milling chuck. Traditionally, in a collet chuck system, as you rotate the nut, it squeezes a tapered collet into a tapered sleeve on the chuck, which obviously then induces the, the clamping onto the tool. The HMC chucks work slightly differently in the fact that when you tighten the nut on those, it actually deforms the body of the tool holder onto the tool. So the clamping pressure is a, high, is a lot higher than a standard collet system. So if you're in a roughing application or um, larger diameter tool use, the cutting force is a lot more. So if you've got more clamping pressure and the stability of a face and taper contact, it's going to be a more reliable system. You tend to find that it's used in more of the, the roughing applications. The accuracy of these tool holders is within 10 microns, which is well within inside what most people would expect on a roughing application. But now they make them in the smaller diameters as well. So a lot of people nowadays are going into coidal milling where you've got long flute contact in tools. And so the potential for a tool pulling out would be quite high. So using the same sort of clamping method with deforming the body in a smaller diameter allows a smaller nose and more access into the job. In the whole range, we have a system of sleeves which allow various coolant and through coolant options as well as diameter. So what sizes can you get these from and to? Uh, the standard one that you see here is a 20 mil. The smaller one is a 12 mil. They do go up to a larger one, which is a 32 mil. And within all the ranges, they do have sleeving systems that will take them down to a three mil clamping capacity. So really, any size tool you can use with it? Pretty much, yes. Well, that's great. And can we talk about your synchro tapping heads now? Yeah. Because what would be the advantage for using one of these over a normal collet system? So the biggest thing when tapping, even on a rigid tapping cycle on a CNC machine, is the synchronization between the spindle actually rotating in a forward direction, stopping, and then the synchronization between the retraction, where it's got to actually come back up in reverse with inside the same pitch. A lot of machines talk about the accuracy of their rigid tapping cycles, but there's always going to be an inconsistency, especially when using imperial sized taps, which are then obviously on a metric um, control. So there's always going to be a rounding, so this missynchronization between the two. Unlike a tension and compression head that then works by al allowing that synchronization to be worked out by allowing the tap to expand and follow the thread back up, these have got lateral float on them. So that is made by using a bush that fits in the middle between the actual tap holder and the back end holder and it just allows that slight amount of rotational float. So as the machine hits the bottom and stops and then starts to accelerate in reverse, that slight inconsistency between the two is taken out by that lateral float of the bush. So on any machine, in any tapping cycle, it reduces the cutting forces and prevents the, the tap breakage. And even with older machines, if the belts aren't quite what they used to be? Obviously, obviously the older machine or the, 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 the more there is this problem with synchronization, the more it will help. So even on a brand new machine, these will still help in the, in the tapping cycles. And can these only be used on millers or can you stick them in a lathe as well? 
You could use them on the lathe. Um, traditionally, they are used more in the in the rigid tapping cycles on milling machines. Yes. And then, what about the collets inside? So, the back ends that you see over here, these ones in particular are classed as a universal. So these are on a cylindrical shank um, with a flat on, which can be put into a collet system or a whistle notch system. They also do the back end system on the face and taper contact back ends integral. The actual tap then itself is held in a tap holder. The tap holder is not just a collet system, it is actually a true tap holder. So it's dedicated to the square drive at the back, which they have, and the actual shank diameter. And then these are done with a roller wrench to actually tighten them up on the collet. These are available in various diameters, depending on the tap that you're using, and also various lengths. So you can get some extremely long taps and, and tap extensions to reach into inaccessible regions as well. Well, that's great, thank you. So if you're having any trouble with your taps breaking, why not give Paul a ring at ITC and see if they can help you?